Welcome to the second part of the tutorial guys where we are going to be saving the, extra, the actual information onto the SD card and this will allow the user to go back and find the, that picture or that sound without even using our application because we're going to save it into either his photo gallery or into his you know ringtones folder basically whatever folder we want. Enough talk, more play. Uh, in the previous tutorial we kind of set up everything and we checked if the SD is available and if it is, um, is it writable? And both, if both those are true, we're going to allow our application to save some data to the SD card. So let's go back into one of our on-click listeners. This depends on which button they pushed. So we're going to save a picture first. Both of them are going to be pretty much the exact same, so you can end up saving any type of file. So first we're going to do a quick if statement to check if the SD is available and if it's writable, okay? Or it is writable. Um, that's the first condition. If both those aren't true, we're gonna we are not gonna try and save to the SD card. Uh, makes you know makes sense. The next thing that we need to do is, is we need to find the directory where we want to save the file. So we're either gonna locate the picture directory, the music directory, the ringtone directory, pretty much any type of directory we want to save to. A lot of these are already defined for any Android operating system, and this will work for um, any. Android application that you're developing that's above or equal to a level API level of 8 and since we're doing an Android 2.2 uh, that's an API level of 8 so we're gonna be fine so first we're gonna call this uh, the path so file path is equal to again the environment we use the environment class a little bit uh, earlier when we get the external storage state uh, we're checking if the SD card is available we're gonna refer to it again this time we're going to say get external public storage directory. So again, this is going to be public where the user can get out of our app, delete our app, and then go into their picture or their gallery file and still see what pictures we saved from our application. So we're actually saving to the person's phone, not somewhere within our own application. And how we're going to refer to the directory you want to save to is again through the environment class. We're going to say dot, and we have all these options. So we have directory movies, directory music, uh, ringtones, pictures, pretty much anything that we want. Uh, we can access it. So that's pretty awesome. Since we're saving a picture, we're just going to save it to their picture gallery. So anytime I develop an app, I save a picture of my face in their gallery. And then they're searching through and they're like, who is this guy? Why is there a picture of this guy in my phone? Uh, so now we've defined the path where we want to save our picture. The next thing that we have to do is define the actual file name, uh, picture.jpg or whatever, uh, .png. That's kind of the, the information we're going to give it now, the specific name. But since again we have an edit text, we're going to refer to that edit text and just get whatever is in the edit text, which is file name. So we're just going to create a string real quick. Name is equal to file name, which is our edit text, dot get text, dot to string, and that converts whatever is in the edit text to a string. Lastly, we're going to combine these two things together. We're going to refer to the directory and also the file name uh, to actually save to the person's phone. So again, it's going to be a file, and this time it's going to be called file. We're going to create a new file, and we're going to refer to the path. Again, this is the directory we're saving. Then we want to give it the name. Okay, so then we're going to refer to our string name. We're also going to add the attachment.png uh, because I'm going to save this exit PNG to their phone. So I want to make sure the extension is PNG as well. Okay, so now we've set up everything. We have the name of the file and the place where we're saving. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our directory actually exists, uh, the path, um, you know, because we don't want to try and save it to a folder that doesn't exist. It should since we're saving it to the pictures. Let's just check if that, that path exists. So we're going to say path. So we're going to make directories. Uh, so what we're doing with this command right here is it saying, hey, does this directory exist? If it does, it's going to return false. That's kind of like a true or false type thing here. Um, if that directory exists, it's going to return false. If it doesn't exist, it's going to create a directory for us, this specific directory. Um, so all we're doing is we're checking if the directory exists. If it doesn't, it's going to create one for us. Pretty simple, right? 
after we make sure everything exists exists uh, we're going to create our input and our output stream so input is is equal to and this is going to be what we're trying to save what we're putting into their phone so how we're going to do this is we're going to get our current resources again the resources of our application and we're going to say dot open raw resources and that's going to open up our actual resource in our resource folder and then we have to give it the identifier so again I was going to save this exit picture just because I had it on my phone so I'm going to refer to the r dot drawable dot uh, exit so now that we have a resource we actually have to create an output stream I believe we covered this in a previous tutorial when we were working with internal data I'm not for sure but uh, output stream we want to create a new output stream again we're shooting the information out from our app to the place where we want it to go we're just going to call this OS and this is going to be a new file output stream and we give it the file that we want to save again the directory we're going out to and up here we defined all of our information with the path and the file name so that's what we're going to pass as our file output stream if you guys never worked with data before these input and output stream that all seems probably kind of confusing but really it's quite simple after you work with it so don't get discouraged I promise you it's gonna be really easy um, working with this kind of information after you do it a couple times so don't give up moral of the story the next thing that we gotta do is we need to create a byte array so this is gonna be our data that we're we're saving and I'll kinda of go over everything in a second uh, because like I said it might be confusing if you've never written data before or read data or anything like that so um, all the data is gonna do is gonna take our input stream again our picture resource and we're gonna convert it into a bunch of data which is gonna be an array um, so what it's doing right now is it's checking whoops um, so what it's kinda doing is it's breaking down that picture and it's adding the information that breaks down into our data array or a byte array as long as that information is still available as long as we still have stuff to read it's still gonna add information into this data uh, variable once there's nothing left available to read that means we have the whole entire uh, that means we have all of the data available to us already so there's you know it's done reading the data pretty much and so the last or the next few things that we gotta do is refer to our input stream and we're gonna say read data and then we're gonna refer to our output stream it's gonna say write data and then we gotta close them both okay uh, so that's pretty much it uh, we're getting some errors because we still have to surround this stuff with a try and catch uh, catching exceptions when we can't write data or stuff like that but again let me just kinda talk through everything um, or actually let's add our try and catch real quick uh, so add with add a try and catch and then we're gonna grab all this information that's not within our try and just throw it in there because we can um, let's also just throw that in there for good measure and then we're gonna add a catch clause and we should be good okay so again all we've done is we check if we can read and write to the SD card if we can we're gonna look for the directory of pictures uh, where the picture directory should be on the phone again we do that through the environment class then we're gonna give it the actual name of the file we wanna create so it's gonna be like whatever we put into the edit text then we're gonna create that whole path and file name put together we're calling that file that's the location and where we're gonna save our picture data uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the picture directory is actually there um, if it's not there it's gonna create that directory for us and then we do a input stream again this is just getting the information about the picture that we're going to save to the person's phone so it's just taking the information from our drawable folder and getting the exit ping uh, next we're just defining an output stream um, as a new file output stream again we're opening up a black hole I think I, I did that thing I don't know um, we're opening up this black hole and we're telling it where we want to 
throw in data and where we want the data to end up, which is going to be again our path and our file name. Next we're going to create a data array of all the information about our picture. Again, we're just going to take any information from our picture, suck it up into the black hole, convert that into a data array. The next thing that we want to do is we want to refer to the input stream. Um, again, we're reading the information about uh, our picture um, or all the data that we gathered about the picture. We're reading that information and then we're writing that information to the location through the file output stream. Then we have to close both of those things. So that's kind of the basic structure. Uh, the errors that we can get is a file not found exception. So if we can't find the exact file that we're referring to, it'll just log that into our uh, logcat down here. And also, um, anytime we're working with input streams and output streams, we need to use the file or the input output exception here, uh, just in case something goes awry. We're gonna catch that information and print it to our screen as well. So let's just test this out. It's not gonna work on our emulator because there's no SD card. So I'm just gonna throw it onto my phone show you guys how this works. Okay, the first thing that you need to do when you run it on your phone, take this guy out because anytime this is in, it's going to say, hey, you can't write to the SD card because we're plugged in and a computer is using your SD card. So make sure you take that out, let your SD card come back so we can use it, then open this up and we're gonna save a file. Um, I'm gonna save a file called Trav, something like that. Then we're gonna save this picture um, we probably should create like a toast to say that it actually saved but again we save that within our picture folder so let's go out of our application see if it saved so it wasn't actually in the gallery what you want to do is you want to go into the files here the SD card and then find the pictures folder and as you can see there's two items in there one is trav.png not sure what that cache is um, but as you can see, it works. We save that exit image and we labeled it as trav.png. Um, so that's the basic concept. Um, I know, again, like I said, it's probably a little bit confusing if you've never done or you've never worked with data, but hopefully you're getting it. We've worked with saving internal data and external data. The next tutorial is probably just going to be review where we save the information to uh, the music file folder and also we might try to refractor some of this code uh, and make it a little bit you know better and we'll also learn about saving the music um, to the person's phone so again thanks guys for watching and please check out the next video please subscribe please give a thumbs up because that's like the only way for us to know that this is actually helping or not so again make sure you do that um, and I will catch you guys later hope you're having a great day and keep it real